Well, folks, welcome back. My name is Kevin Darty. I'm with the Illinois Agriculture in the Classroom Program as the state contact. I serve as the president-elect of the National Ag, of Class Ag in the Classroom Organization, and I am here today really happy to introduce our Ag Badging Session. This is part of our virtual National Ag in the Classroom Conference. Remember, all sessions are being recorded. Give us a couple of days, and this will be on our YouTube channel. You'll find that on the National Ag in the Classroom, on the National Ag in the Classroom page. You'll be able to find it on the YouTube channel. Um, again, our conference is sponsored by BASF, the CHS Foundation, and Corteva AgriScience. We thank them for their continued support. With this, we're going to talk about ag badging. In Illinois, we're big fans of ag badging. First up will be Lynn Wallen. She's the education specialist for the National Center for Ag Literacy. She's also a gifted and talented specialist for the Cash County School District. She has a bachelor's in science in L.Ed. from Brigham Young and a master's in ed from uh, Utah State University. With her is Lynn Snow from the other side. She's from Maine. Her experience began with the creation of a school garden in 2009. She was granted permission to repurpose an area adjacent to her school. The project began with a few supplies, no funding, and lots of ambition. That sounds like a lot of things that happen with teachers. No funding and ambition, right? The successful garden is now known among school garden enthusiasts across the state. We are excited to bring the two Lynn's Two Lens doing it again, doing it virtually. They did it in Orlando. The floor is yours for ag badging, guys. Thanks for joining us. All right, thanks, Kevin. Um, so um, Kevin did the introduction. So I want to just give you a second. Ooh, why is it taking time to load? Um, to be able to see this QR code, if you just, um, want to scan the QR code that will give you access to this whole slideshow um, and you can do what you want with it. But the important thing is that all of the, the resources that I talk about will be linked from the slideshow. So that maybe makes it a little bit easier. You don't have to scramble to write down websites and things like that. The other option is you could email me and I'd be happy to send you a link to the slideshow as well. So um, just give you a moment to do that. Um, so we're really excited to be presenting today, um, and I'm glad that Lynn from Maine, Lynn Snell from Maine, could join us today. Um, we met at a, an Egg in the Classroom conference and um, became instant friends because we share the same first name. And um, when we were in Orlando this year, she uh, was able to, or she caught me and she showed me what she's been doing with this ag badging program and I put her on the spot and asked her if she would share during my face to face session in Orlando, which she did an amazing job and it was it added so much to see what um, teachers are doing with this program and so I invited her to um, share today too so first we're going to talk about um, badging, then we'll talk about the ag badging program and then I'm going to turn it over to Lynn to talk about what she's been doing in Maine. Um, so what is badging? Badging is um, basically micro-credentialing, which we've been doing for years in the education field. Um, so if you think about reward systems for um, motivating learners, like if, you know, every time they pass off a multiplication table or if they read a um, book from a different genre, um, the fifth grade Great American Award is another example of micro-credentialing, um, and badging is micro-credentialing. Um, Dr. Cheryl Grant, who um, was the director of digital credentialing for Badger, which is one of the top badging platforms, um, she defined badging as a validated indicator of accomplishment, skill, quality, or interest that can be earned in many different learning environments. Um, so badging recognizes that learning can happen anywhere, anytime, that learning creates opportunities, um, that there are diverse learning pathways beyond the formal classroom. Um, there's different kinds of learning, there's different ways to learn, um, there's different kinds of learning environments, and badges provide a different way of illustrating student growth. So there are four key elements to um, badging. And the first is recognition. So badges are visible records and they recognize newly acquired knowledge and skills. Recognition helps motivate learners and motivation leads to engagement. So as learners complete milestones, they can clearly see their own individual progress and that could be motivating for a lot of learners. 
Each badge needs to have a set of clearly defined criteria and requirements to be earned. Um, so the learner needs to demonstrate certain skills and knowledge and submit evidence of learning. Um, but there could be some level of choice um, when learners are able to choose from a given set of tasks um, what path they want to take. Um, so David Nagaidala, who has done extensive research um, with digital portfolio portfolios in K through 12 classrooms, um, he says that building or badging tasks should be portfolio worthy, meaning that they require effort, they allow for voice and choice, um, and they're authentic to the subject areas, um, and that they require an application of knowledge and that they generate products that a learner would be proud to display. So meaningful badges are challenging to receive, and they're rigorous, they're relevant to the learner. There's meaning behind each badge, and that includes who earned the badge, the criteria to earn it, and um, when the badge was received and the evidence of learning. Um, so on the slideshow, there is a three and a half minute video. I'm not gonna play it for you, but it's on there for, for you um, as a resource if you want to learn more about, about badging. It's not a long video, but it does go through um, the most important pieces of badging. So what is the Ag Badging Program? So the program was developed for ages eight through, students that were ages eight through 11. So that would be grades three through five. And there are two main components of the program. Um, one is the Ag Badging Field Guide. And this is a paper-based field guide. And then we also have um, a landing page, um, which is agbadging.agclassroom.org. And that is right on the very first page of the field guide. Um, and I'll show you how, we'll actually go to the landing pa page in just a minute, but I wanna talk about this paper-based field guide. So um, we wanted the, this program to be um, something that all students could access. So whether or not they had um, access to the internet or they have a device that they could get on the internet with, um, they can still do the program. And so that's why we chose to do this as a paper-based program rather than a digital badging program. Um, also, we really liked that um, the students would are able to use this like a field guide so they can um, record their observations and they can draw their observations um, right in this book and everything's all in one place. Um, I'll show you a digital, I know it's hard to see with my, my uh, slides and also me trying to show the camera, but um, I'll show you a, a bigger version of this in just a second. But the badges are actually stickers. And so um, when a badge is earned, they can put the sticker on the title page of the theme that they earned the, the badge for. Um, and so we'll, we'll talk about that in just a second. So there are five main themes in the Ag Badging program. So agriculture and the environment, plants and animals, food and health, technology and engineering, and geography and culture. And these all align with the National Agricultural Literacy Outcomes, which are linked right here on this slide. So um, you can go back and look at those um, NALOs if you are not familiar with those already. Um, so with five themes, um, e in each theme, there are what we call milestones. So those are five activities that students would complete. Um, so they only need to complete three of the five. So there's a little bit of the choice that's involved in this program. Um, so if they, if they complete three of the milestones, then they earn um, a badge. And if they complete all of the, the themes, um, get all of all five badges, then they are earning the um, completion badge. Um, and like I said, they there are spots within the book to put each of their badges and the completion badge just goes right on the title page. Um, so after they complete the badge, they have the option to um, complete a survey to earn a code name. And so this is completely optional, but um, we hope that some participants will do this so that we can get a little bit of feedback. Um, since we're dealing with um, children, we don't ask for any personal information. 
Um, the only thing we ask for is that they tell us what state or territory they live in um, and then which milestones they completed for each badge. And so that just gives us some good feedback. If um, nobody ever says that they complete a certain milestone, then we know that maybe that's not a popular one. And in our second printing, um, we would make some changes. So um, when they get when they complete the survey, they can get their field scout code name. It's just a little tiny carrot. Um, like Kevin said in the introduction, I, I have been a teacher for 28 years um, and I've been teaching most recently fourth, fifth and sixth grade gifted and talented classes. Um, and it's just little things like that that are a carrot for some students and for some students they don't care so but for a lot of my students this would kind of be a big deal so um there are i think about 14 different agricultural careers that would be code names and we make sure um to do a little disclaimer to so that students know that we're not matching you with a career that you then now have to be a soil scientist when you grow up but we're just um, trying to make them aware of different agricultural careers so we give a little um description with the code name and then um, a link to visit the FFA Ag Explorer website, which is an, an awesome website that will give them more information about agricultural careers. And then always a little corny joke just for fun. All right, so I would like to go out to um, our Ag Badging landing page and just kind of walk you through what you would find here. So like I said, if a student doesn't have access um, to the internet, that's okay. They don't have to have access to this, but this is just additional um, to what, what we're doing with the program. So you'll see right on the landing page that there is a link to the Ag Badging Field Guide. We do have a digital version of the field guide. Um, so you could go ahead and look and see all what's inside um, the field guide. Uh, there's a, a PDF of the Ag Badging Field Guide, so if you choose, you could um, print it off. It's 64 pages, so just a little warning, it'd be quite a lot of printing, but um, that is an option. Um, and if you are printing, there is also um, a PDF of the sticker page, so obviously they won't print off as stickers, but you could cut them out and and glue them on if you want to. So that's just another option. And there's also a link to the Ag Classroom store. Um, and so if we go there, you'll see um, that this is where you could purchase the field guides. So we were fortunate enough to have National Agriculture in the classroom um, subsidize these field guides. And so um, at the moment, they are, um, Let's see, so we're $9.60 if you buy a set of 30. Um, so that would come to 32 cents per field guide um, plus shipping. And then for a case of 125, um, you can see that that one is $20. And so that comes to 16 cents for each field guide. Um, so we, uh, printed in our first printing 100,000 field guides, and I think we're about seven to 8,000 left. So um, we only had the subsidy subsidizing for um, the first printing. And so we're coming up to needing to do our second printing and we're working on it. But we, as of right now, we don't um, have a guaranteed um, money for for helping with that cost. So um, without that, the books would be about a um, fifty, maybe even $2. We haven't gotten a bid for a minute. So I know things just keep costing more and more. So <laughs> we'll see how that goes. So if you're interested, I definitely recommend um, jumping on those while um, we still have some left in the in the store. All right, so um, back to the landing page. So we have three tiles. Um, we have a tile for students, for teachers, and for volunteers. Um, so if you go to the student tile, then they'll see all of the themes here. Uh, if you click on one of the themes, these are the five milestones, the five choices that they would have to earn this Plants and Animals badge. Um, if you click on one of the milestones, this is the Pollinator Hotel 
milestone, you'll see um, a pop up that shows um, if there's a tutorial video to go along with the activity that is there for them. Um, this is not required to have the tutorial video, but we just think it could be helpful for some students to see the activity being done. Um, and so we we have some some activities really don't need a tutorial, but the ones that we felt um, it would be helpful, we we made those. Um, there's also suggested books and then um, just additional places where students could go to learn more about the topic. So in this case, there's a really cool video. Um, this is a the pollinator hotel. So we're talking about pollination and pollinators. Um, and this is a cool video about um, bees in in their cells. So taking you through this different stages of a bee's life from the egg to the larva to the pupa to the adult. Um, and it's just a really fascinating quick video for students to watch. There's also um, a, a game that they can play. So just depending on the milestone, there are different, um, different resources for students to learn more about the topic. Um, so going back to uh, the Ag Badging Home page, um, we also have a tile for teachers. And here we have um, an overview of the Ag Badging program for teachers. Um, originally, we were just thinking that the Ag Badging program would be used by um, folks that do events. So like farm field days or farm camps in the summer. Um, but what we quickly found out was that teachers were really interested in this program as well. And so, like I, I said, Lynn Snow will talk to you a little bit about what she's been doing in her classroom with her students. Um, but we, we quickly realized that we needed to have some, some resources specific to classroom teachers. So we have our overview here. Um, we also have just all in one neat, tidy space. We have um, the suggested books that go along with each of the milestones in the program. That was a request from teachers. And we had another request when we were at our conference in Orlando, and that was to make a list similar to this, but with uh, um, the materials that um, you would need to have to do milestones all in one neat little um, list. So that will be added to this page as well. Um, just to mention the activities, uh, we really wanted to make sure that the material, that we didn't require a lot of materials to um, do this activity. So if a student wanted to do the Ag Badging program at home on their own, um, they could. It could, we just require materials that would typically be found in a home. Um, and so it's, it's not hoping that nobody would have to go really buy anything. Um, so hopefully that's helpful. Um, if we go to one of the milestones again in the teacher's um, tile, we include the tutorial video and we also link to an associated lesson plan. So a teacher might want to um, do a formal lesson along the same um, topic. And so we include that. And then we also include uh, standards, both the NALOs and um, national education content standards that go along with that activity. Um, and then we also added a volunteers page. And so um, we know that a lot of teachers are taking um, at the activities from the Ag Badging program into school. So when they go in to read a book to a class, um, they'll take a book and they'll take an activity. And so um, we included a page for our volunteers as well. Um, so same thing here, the overview of the program with suggested books, and we'll add the materials there as well. Um, when you click on a milestone under the volunteers, then you will see a pop-up, which includes the tutorial videos, um, background agricultural connection. So just a little bit of background about the topic and a suggested book. So this is really nice for volunteers that wanna go read in the classroom. They have um, a suggested book and, um, and an activity right at their fingertips. All right, um, one thing I failed to mention, I wanna go back to the student page. 
Um, this is where they can um, click to get the survey to fill out um, if they complete the program. And then we also have the explore more. So hopefully this program gets students interested in exploring more about agriculture and it takes them to the student center page um, on the National Ag in the Classroom website where um, they can play games, they can look at um, ag facts from their state, um, take a virtual tour. So there's some videos of different farms there. Um, look at the career seeker, look at different careers in agriculture, um, and they can do a little um, ag smart assessment as well to test their ag knowledge. All right, are there any questions, Kevin, that I need to address at this point? Nope, all good. All good, okay. Well, if there are any questions, feel free to um, write those in the Q&A and I'm happy to answer um, any questions that anybody has. Um, I was going to show you the little tutorial video, but I don't, I had to download some something for my audio, so that's not gonna happen. Uh, <clears throat> so I wanted to turn the time over to Lynn Snow. Um, so we kind of uh, already talked about Lynn, but she is a um, fourth and fifth grade teacher in Maine at um, Thomaston Grammar School. And um, she teaches science, social studies, and health. And um, I was just really excited. She's been so excited about the Ag Badging program. Um, she brought an entire binder full of um, pictures to show me what she's been doing with her students. And I just so impressed. Um, like I said, I asked her if she would be willing to share with our group there at our session in Orlando, um, which she did just spur of the moment and just got up and was able to um, blow everybody away with what she's been doing in her classroom. Um, so I'm so excited that she agreed to come and share um, those things with you virtually today. So Lynn, I'm going to turn it over to you. All right, the Lynn and Lynn show. So <laughs> hello from Maine, everybody. It's a beautiful day here in Midcoast, Maine. It's about 85 degrees. We have not had good weather all spring. So today is a real treat. I've been kayaking this morning and sitting by my pool this afternoon. And it's just after three o'clock here in Maine. So not that time everywhere. Um, it's been a good day and I'm happy to be here um, and talking about this incredible program, which I learned about at the National Conference in Saratoga Springs, New York. Um, previous to this last national conference. And I had been to other trainings with Lynn and she's an incredible speaker. So I made sure I got to that one and I was sold immediately. Um, I went to my state contact and said, I have to have these books, I'm gonna do this. And I did. So this past school year from when we returned from February break to when we left for April break, I did ag badging. And I had fourth and fifth graders every day um, for that time frame, and we pretty much use the ag bag books every single day. I have mine right here. Um, and I just want to walk through what I did with these. So the first thing I did is I went to the back of the book and I took all the stickers out because <laughs> I wanted control of the badges. Um, I wanted kids to prove that they'd really done these activities and done them well. And I signed off. There's a place to sign off within the books um, for every single one of my 42 students when they completed. And that's not at the same time. I had three different groups of 42 total students. Um, and it was a great experience. And I I will do it again, not this next year, because I will have those same students again, um, but the following year, I'm, I'm sure I'll be using this program. And I just want to tell you from the teacher's perspective how I sort of did this. And I um, I improvised throughout the book, and I it's meant to do that. So if there are other things that work well, you can make this your own program, like take the stickers out first. Um, before I forget, and you'll see these at the end, the other thing I did is I created for each student, I created a pennant. It's just a piece of felt. Um, I sewed over the end, slid a dowel through, used a pipe cleaner, and then I took stickers and I actually made pins. I have a badge maker um, in my classroom. So not only did they earn a sticker for their book, they also could earn a badge and it was a big deal to earn the pin itself and put it on your pennant out in the hallway. So you'll see slides of that as we go through. So this is how we start. You can see the snow there. We didn't get a lot of snow this year, but that was February. 
Um, and the first thing we did, we started with right at the beginning of the book, and this is the um, seed sprouts activity. Now the book says doing it in a plastic bag, but I had so many of these food gloves in my classroom. And this is a uh, lesson also, the sprouting the seeds in a bag. And so we use the bags and we sprouted corn seeds, most of the kids. Um, in the window in the library, because I'm actually on the north side of the building, so I don't get a lot of light. And here's Abel, um, one of my fifth graders from last year, checking out the germination. This is a great activity um, to do with kids because they can see it right before them. Cotton balls, some seeds, and we recorded data, and this is what we did for that medium. Do you want to go to the next slide? Lynn is running the slides, so... <laughs> Well, since I have the power, I'll I'll just um, chirp in also. So yeah, so for this activity in the ag badging book, it's just a Ziploc bag because that's what we figure students will have at home. But what Lynn's done is used um, this idea from a lesson called Farming in a Glove. And so that is a lesson that's on the, the matrix. So hopefully you're in the session, um, very first session this morning where we talked about the um, agricultural literacy curriculum matrix that um, is on the national website, the curriculum matrix. So there are 476, I believe, lessons from K through 12 on the matrix. Um, it can be found on the national site, agclassroom.org, and or your um, state website will have a, a link to the curriculum matrix as well. Yeah, anybody not on there, get on there. You never have to plan a lesson again. There's is so full of uh, curriculum ideas. Okay. Um, so the other thing I did is so we did this germination in these gloves, and then another activity um, is where you do a soil ex um, experimentation and you try to um, see how seeds grow in sand or regular soil. Um, I can't remember what the third one is because for me, the third medium became water and I did some hydroponics with this. So I took those seeds or the kids did from their gloves. And after they'd recorded their data and growth there, we actually use those seeds to plant. Um, and each, each student had a small container of sand and one of regular potting soil. And then they had a test tube um, with water to just do a little test on hydroponics. And they recorded all that data within the group, within the book, because I didn't feel I could get rid of these seeds after we germinated them all. So that's Sophia recording her data. You wanna to go to the next slide? Cause and the so next in, in that lesson, so you can see that Lynn has made, um, has adapted activities to meet the needs of her particular students that she's working with. And I love that. I think there's so much potential with this program to just, make it, customize it to what you um, want for your group that you're working with. And so you used potting soil, sand, and water. Um, and the other option, well, we didn't use water in the actual activity. It was local soil comparing that. So, um, but I love that you just jump in and make it work for your group. And you know what, I'm glad you reminded me what the third medium was because the ground is solid frozen in Maine in February. There's no way I could have got local soil unless I'd collected it beforehand. So I think that's why I probably played around with a little bit of hydroponics within there. And like Lynn says, this program is so adaptable. So you take what you have um, and as long as you're meeting the, the standards of the activities, you know, it, you can do a lot of different things. I'll talk about that too, the pollinator hotel activity and what I did with the two different grade levels. Um, so here they are with the, with the seeds and germinate. This was probably St. Patrick's Day by the look of that picture. <laughs> um, you can see on the back counter there, there are still gloves with some seeds in it. Um, I have, I created my own sort of system in the back of the room there with some grow lights and the hydroponics sat in that area too, um, as well as these other. So they all had, you know, some of the same environment that way as well. But great activity, a lot of fun, kids and because we're enjoying it. Miley there is with the book in front of her. So hopefully the next slide will show with the drawings that, yeah. So this is something I'd done in the past. If you go back to this one. So then they take their seeds because I had five and I only really needed three, but go back to the other slide, Lynn, would you? With the okay. drawings, the, yeah, the diagrams. 
Um, you can see that hand keeps jumping on you. <laughs> you can see that hand in the corner there holding that, that seed. Um, I wanted kids to examine their seed really closely. And so we dissect seeds. Can you see? I'm not on the right slide, Lynn, if you go back. Oh, okay. Back. Let's see. This one? Ah, okay. That one. That one right there. That's perfect. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> they actually were one to one iPads in my school district. Um, and they took a picture of one of their seeds and then they created using either the pages um, program on their iPads, one of them or a couple of them use pit collage. I don't even know how to use pit collage, but they do. And using their own photograph of their seed, they diagrammed it to learn about the parts of a seed. That's not within the book, but it's, it's something I wanted to do and took them to this next level to really identify parts of a seed. I love these two different, two of my fifth graders, Aiden and Oliver's um, diagrams here because Aiden calls it a flower, F-L-W-E-R, corn. And Oliver has it right, flower seed <laughs> diagram. So these were kind of neat. They enjoyed doing this and their photography work was incredible. So. Let's go to that next slide. So here's the Pollinator Hotel. This is on page 25 of the current book. Um, and you, you take a like a clear soda bottle or a water bottle and you make a hotel for solitary bees. Um, and you have all these cylinder, whether it be uh, straws or you can make your own cylinders and you fill these bottles packed full of them um, in hopes to attract some, some pollinators to your garden space. Um, and these are my fourth graders last year. These kids I'll have again next year in fifth grade. Uh, creating these, my problem was I ran out of paper straws because it does take a lot of straws to do these. And they also, every kid was also required to make their own tubes. Um, and we used some um, sticks even to fill some of the space, but it still took a lot of straws. So with my fifth graders, instead of doing this activity, the main ag in the classroom book this year was Aphis mellifers. Um, it's a fantastic story um, about a bee telling their life cycle. And it's, um, it's just well written. And I had gotten a bunch of those books and my fifth graders became the volunteer readers for the younger students in the classroom. So that's what I substituted for this activity because they still learned about bees and pollination. In fact, the fifth graders probably learned even more um, about, uh, about how important that is um, and shared it with younger students. So I credited them for that within this activity. And I wrote it right in their book, Substitute Activity, um, Aphis Mellifera. So it's just another, you know, use what you have and to meet the standards in whatever way you possibly can. So that's on the bottom left-hand corner there. I don't know why she looks so unhappy, but she was putting one of those hives out in our garden fence. And we have a bunch of them stuffed in the fence, hoping to attract some bees. All right. The next slide, I'm just, I don't have any notes here in front of me, just so you know, I'm using these slides to recall what I did this past um, fall, or sorry, spring in the classroom. Um, March is National Nutrition Month, so no better time to do that food and health badge than in March. I did send for some curriculum um, from, uh, yep, <laughs> a national uh I can't remember, but the my plate, the whole my plate organization, um, all that food on the table that you see in that picture, that's all fake. Something I inherited in my classroom from an old health teacher. They love it when I get out all the fake food. And one of the activities I did is I gave them the my plate placemat, if you will, like you can see in the top right hand corner and said, okay, let's make a well balanced meal that covers all the groups here and let's talk about nutritional value. So that was one of the things they did within that particular activity badge. They, they love doing that. They really thought they were um, professional chefs. But in the, the smaller picture in the bottom on the back wall there, that's our gym cafetorium because we don't have a cafeteria in a gym. This is a K to five school with about 200 students in it. Um, but they took the April lunch menu. This was still March. And each student had a day within the month and they created a my plate for that day. And we post them in the cafeteria. So they would be lined up there before they got their lunch each day and they could see the daily menu and which food group it fell into and get a lot of feedback there from the younger students that uh, really enjoyed that activity. So 
There's some of my fifth graders who've now moved on to middle school um, sitting next to those. They're just small paper plates that we did this on. Uh, hey, real quick, Lynn, I uh, got a question about straws. I, I don't know the answer to this. B Hotels, could you use plastic straws, not paper ones? You're not supposed to. <laughs> no, I didn't you, think so. Okay, so yeah, yeah, no plastic straws. Yeah, you really should stick with um, something biodegradable um, that doesn't take a thousand years to break down. So yeah, we could come up with plenty of those, but we did stick to paper. So Thank paper you. straws, there's also um, a suggestion that students could make their own paper straws by rolling up just pieces of um, just scrap paper or recycled paper. Um, and so if they don't have paper straws, like Lynn said, it does take a lot to stuff in there. And I love that idea of stuffing in, you know, sticks or um, other other pieces from nature in there as well. But yeah, um, the plastic straws are not recommended. Um, so yeah, those are some options. Uh, and I was trying to come up with USDA has all kinds of curriculum for nutrition. So they, they'll send you whatever you want for absolutely nothing. So I had, I had contacted them and got some more um, curriculum to work with this particular badge. So again, I try to bring in other things and use this as my starting point and, and went from there. What do I have next, Lynn? <laughs> Let's see. But next. Oh, this was the favorite. The build a barn activity and the technology and engineering, I think it's called, um, badge was their absolute favorite, um, this build a barn. The fifth graders, I had a bunch of material. So I tried to empty the closet out, got a bunch of stuff out with some cardboard and the glue guns. Um, and they went at it and they built barns. They did first have to do the blueprint. Now you have a blueprint in the book. Uh, an area to draw the blueprint on page 38. I actually got out graph paper um, and made them use some scale. And before that, I put together a really short PowerPoint presentation for them to look at different kinds of barns and how a uh, barn for horses may look different than a barn for chickens or for sheep. So we sort of looked at a lot of barns first. I got some ideas. Um, they decided what kind of animal they're gonna build a barn for. They did a blueprint drawing. It's all right there in the book about what needs to be included in this barn. And they went to town. They really had a blast. Now, as far as materials go, again, this was the reverse. The fifth graders used up a lot of the popsicle sticks and the glue sticks and there, the cardboard and everything else. Um, but I have a lot of Legos. So the fourth graders, they designed their barns and they built them with Legos and they had just as much fun. So this activity, I don't think you can go wrong. And it was this activity that I actually did with a group of peers in New York. And we had fun, a bunch of adults building their own barns. So I have a great picture with, um, with Lynn and Deb in it with our barn that we had built. So I think the next page actually might even have some more barns on it. There's a lot of pictures with the barns. The next slide, yeah. This is Isabella. She went above and beyond. She didn't build that all in the classroom. She went home and she was so excited about it that um, she came in the next day with this incredible barn she had built. And behind her, that's my um, projector screen showing. And we were watching a live video throughout doing all this, a local farm. It was um, sheep season. And the, the lambing season, the lambs were being born. So we always had that on the classroom during the ag badging time of the day. So they enjoyed that too. It felt like they were actually on the farm and building their own barns and they were architects. So great activity. All right, what's next? So these are the pennants I was talking about. Um, yeah, it took a little time over February break to create these things and bring them into the classroom. But this really sold this to the kids because they were so motivated to earn those pins, not just the stickers in their book, but also the actual pin and go out into the hallway and, and put it on. Um, like Lynn mentioned in the beginning, those carrots work for this age group, this three to five age group. They sort of jump right into that kind of thing. Um, even doing it for that many weeks, we didn't actually quite finish the last badge. We sort of ran out of time and I had a school garden I needed to get into before the end of the school year. So um, some of them finished their last badge at home 
and they had their parents sign it off and brought their back to me, book back to me and showed me. And that's how they earned their, their last, last badge. So there's some of the kids very proud of their work. And um, I was extremely proud of them too. I don't know if I have any more slides after that. Do I? The, oh, okay. The last, just to cut, these are some of the fourth graders. These kids I'll have again um, this coming year, holding up and showing their, their work that they earned every single one of those pins. There were no giveaways um, in the classroom. One thing I forgot to mention at the beginning is I used the um, agricultural literacy standards, the assessment that they did before I even started this program to understand where kids were at um, with their agricultural literacy and then retested them at the end. And there was, there was absolute growth. Um, and I credit a lot of that to this, this program. So I can't say enough good about it. I would encourage anybody, you might not be able to do it like I did because I was fortunate enough to be able to teach science every day. I am back to teaching science and literacy this coming year. So I'm not gonna be able to have quite the science time and ag time that I did before, but it's it's well worth exploring and uh, doing these activities. So. So much, okay. Lynn. Um, I appreciate that. It's just so fun to see the the pictures of what your students did and what you've done with your class. Um, what's really great about this this program is that even if students only complete one activity out of the book for sixteen cents, it is worth it. Um, in my opinion, that they got that um, they increase their agricultural um, literacy knowledge by just that much, um, and so. The, the book, like we said, um, it can be used in so many different ways. It is an honor system if you earn your badge or not. Um, in the overview, we ask the students to um, have it signed off by a parent, a teacher, a, a guardian, a grandparent, a youth leader. Um, but it really is an honor system. So if they want to go in and take this survey and tell us that they did every single milestone and they really didn't, it doesn't, you know, it is, it, it, we, we're not going to know any different. But the, the whole program was set up because printing 100,000, I can't keep track of 100,000 students. I have a lot of um, responsibilities <laughs> within the, the National Center um, that creating resources for, for teachers. So um, this is sort of an on your honor system and that allows for um like what Lynn did to make um some adaptations to best meet the needs of her own students um so just going to mention some other ways that we've heard from actually um, real quick uh Lynn yes. question for the other Lynn while you were there uh oh, okay, asking so about if you created an assessment to go with this beyond the badging system so the assessment that I used was the National Agricultural Literacy Outcome because they've already created assessment. It's a 15 question, multiple choice, available online survey um, that I used before and after the program. Um, other than that, their work in their book was the assessment for me. I, you know, when they did the, like the weather watch piece. I, I went through and looked at everything. My, I did my initials, I don't know how many times throughout that, the whole thing. So that was my assessment as well. So um, the assessment that Lynn is talking about, if you're in the agclassroom.org, which is the National Agriculture in the Classroom website, um, I went to Teacher Center and then scroll down to the Ag Knowledge tile. Um, this is where the assessments are located. So there are some quick quizzes, but I think what you used are um, these. Is that correct? I think so. Yep. And I oh, actually wow. used yeah. I used the paper version. I didn't. Right. Use so that's what they would use. So this one, you you actually need to give some information because this is a study that's being done, um, and so um, then they will send you that PDF so you can print out the paper version. So, And it comes with a, a how to score it because some of these questions have multiple answers to them. So there's a whole scoring guide that goes with it. And it determines at the end how proficient or not proficient these students are when it comes to agricultural literacy. It's a good assessment. I've used it before this past year and have you know appreciated what I learned through that assessment. 
Thanks, Lynn. Um, so like I was saying, um, some ways that we've heard that people have been using the program, um, we have um, you know, geared it towards ages eight through 11, but um, we have had ag teachers tell us that they've been using it with their students, particularly if it's a new program in the school. They say, my students know nothing and we did the ag badging program together as a class. And so um, that's not what we expected, but that's they were really excited about how things went. And um, we've ha also had FFA students who go into elementary schools use activities from the ag badging program and they um, revisit the same kids so they do different activities from the ag badging program and then they leave the field guide with the students so that they can um, finish at home like lynn said sometimes they'll finish sometimes they won't but whether or not they do um i think just finishing some of the activities is is a win so okay i think kevin's ready to <laughs> well no uh, with that we've we've okay. answered the questions i will i'll just put in a personal testimony we've been using it across the state in illinois as well Teachers love it. Kids love it. Our, our county folks really, really enjoy it as well. So great activities, great ways to use that. Thank you to Lynn, uh, Lynn, for sharing uh, from that uh, from a classroom perspective beyond just uh, that extracurricular kind of scouting activity. You know, uh, originally a long time ago when we heard this proposed, it was kind of like the Boy Scouts or the Girl Scouts, earn the badge, do those type of things. So def definitely seeing the the, um, the the how this is how morphed into the the next level. So. Yeah. Um, uh, uh, how long does one activity take? You know, that varies because like even the, the seed, the seed germination, that's a three or four day activity by itself, but uh, they, they vary. Some are pretty quick could be done in an hour the but you could take a you could take a week for it uh, the whole my plate thing could be a week and write a report and do all sorts of things with it so really good guides for people to uh start and begin with Lynn I'll let you add on if you want to talk about the activity yeah. either Lynn yeah. <laughs> oh that's that's perfect thank you Kevin and yeah it you're correct it could be just um something that can be done in a half an hour, or it could be a 10 day observation, right? So it just depends and they do have choice. So there's five options for each badge. And if like, well, I don't have paper straws, then I'll do this other activity, that's fine too. Um, one other thing I wanted to request that is that if you do, um, like Lynn, <laughs> she she did the ag badging program with her students. Um, if you would just let me know how things are going. We'd love to have that feedback, so. And okay. I want to put in a plug for Kevin's um, presentation at five o'clock Eastern. Don't miss his, This it's always my favorite presentation. Oh. So I'm excited for that, Kevin. <laughs> there you go. Well, thank you for that plug. That's right. So with that, <laughs> thanks to Lynn and Lynn. Uh, both of you go enjoy the weather, all right, where you're at. So enjoy the rest of July. We thank you for your presentation. Folks, we'll get started with our next presentation uh, at the top of the hour. Can't believe we're talking about jack-o'-lanterns already. Here it is, July, and it's time for jack-o'-lanterns. Not just for jack-o'-lanterns. Uh, Dusty McCartney from Oklahoma will be joining us shortly at the top of the hour. With that, thanks to Lynn and Lynn, and we'll see the rest of you here at the top of the hour. Thanks, guys. Thank you. Thank you, Lynn. Thanks, Lynn.